We're in the middle of the channel, about 30 foot of water. We're gonna drop an anchor. We ain't no, ain't no rocket science. We really don't know what's supposed to happen. We're just gonna let these soak for about a week. See about 30, 33 foot of water right here. We just use a channel marker or a tree or stump or something for a landmark. Got the wire net, got the cheese block right there against the throat of it. Dropping her straight in there. All right, so we got about 50 foot of uh, line on the tail line, about 50 foot on the head line, just tied onto this wire net, letting it sink right down in there. We're just gonna drop a weight on this end. We should be able to drag it, drag that rope up. We got us a marker up there. We'll let it soak about seven days, see what happens. Same thing, we got us an anchor. About 50 foot of rope, 50, 60 foot. Steep here, it's about 30 foot again. This is uh, the old channel. It's not, it's not the markers on the lake, but it's the old channel. seeing them on scope a lot of times when I'm perch fishing. I see my fish up about 15, 16, 17 foot, you know, in the center of the water column. But you don't have no therm no thermocline now. Not the winter. So all them catfish, you can see them just stacked on the bottom. It looks like they're on top of each other now. Right. Well, the catfish is a scavenger anyway. And for some reason, he's a bottom hooker. I mean, that's what he's he'd rather be. He's sitting under that other fish waiting on Shad to die and fall or whatever. You You'll have a you'll have a, a, a shad kill, and also all that stuff in white perch, and they all gorge themselves. If they go to spit up, they spit up all that shad stuff goes to the bottom, and they they just sit down there waiting. You know we're kind of out of that boat run, so it was kind of I told him let's just sit one over here and see, kind of test it out. Coming up here. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> went the wrong way with it. Oh, my God. All right, let's come out, come out this back end. We'll put them in this bucket. Let's, uh, we'll, 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 we'll put them in this bucket right here. Fish fry. <laughs> Line another one on the <laughs> Hey. Brother Ricky, that little old bucket ain't big enough. No, no, but it's my size bucket, so I picked it up. <laughs> you get this in the, it, the, this is 65 and up bucket right here. This is that that 65 and down That's bucket you got right here. What you think? If catfish and white birds a lot of times do the same thing. In the same hole. The same it'll be, hole. They'll be above them catfish, so That's wherever right. you see it, if you with perch fish, you see them on your sonar or your live scope or whatever. Yeah, well, a couple things happen. If you look, all you all your shad, your biggest part of your shad in the lake is out floating around in this channel. Well, then your white perch is going to come to that channel for two reasons: for the feed, for the temperature, and then uh, the other thing is the deeper the water, the less effect those high pressure fronts and stuff have on them. Yeah. That high pressure wear them out. In the wintertime, you got fronts every three days, every three or four days, you have a front come through. Low pressure, high pressure. That's what I think, Captain. And, you know, that's what. Bradley's got some new help. Yeah. She ain't no trouble. <laughs> she ain't as much trouble as Oakley is. Oakley would be swimming right now. <laughs> she be done jumped in. Yeah, but see, that's the difference in a Smith and a Carter. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, Carter's a lot less trouble than Smith. Oh, 100% <laughs> agree. <laughs> the same way. All right, I need to be up there where I can probably help roll it. Can you get that headline? Right, sure. okay. What you doing, Bradley? Got to, got to turn some of these smaller ones back. We have a new helper. Fifteen or twenty years. Hey, look there. We got a pot in here. You just don't know what to do. <laughs> there goes Rip. Now look around, make sure we ain't got no dogs in the boat. <laughs> this lake is full of fish. Ain't no secrets in it. It's just time of year or, or what? When you need the fish, you gotta find out what time of year, what what temperature, where the fish is at. It's, it's loaded with fish. I think we're a few short. <laughs> All right, we tore them up today. Had Danielle, Mr. Lloyd, and Ricky Carter in the boat with me. Uh, some of you may know Ricky. Some of you don't. Ricky's daddy was Brother Paul Carter. He was a Baptist preacher here in North Louisiana for years and years. Probably one of the best commercial fishermen in this area. Brother Paul was our pastor at Antioch Baptist here in Farmerville, Louisiana for 10 years. And... Um, before he passed away 
and privileged to get uh, his son Ricky to go with us, brother Ricky. He's he's a preacher too, and show us some of the knowledge passed down from generation to generation, like he said. So we'll finish dressing this mess of fish for supper, and uh, get them in the cooker. But we had a, a really, really good catch. Want to share that with y'all. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, that uh, man, they struggle to, to get by week to week. You know, this, this is a good way to put fish in your freezer in the wintertime. These fish are, are congregated up in these creek channels. Don't matter what lake and body water you go to, they're going to be bunched. If there's channel cats in there, they're going to be bunched up in the original creek channels. So you can take these wire nets or hoop nets or slack traps. We're just using the small wire nets right now and, and loading up, catching as many fish as you would any other way. Power block in it, putting it right in the center of the channel. You can imagine a bowl and them fish are stacked right down in the bottom of it right now. That's where we're catching these channel cats. That's gonna be it for this one. God's country hunting and fishing, keeping it real.